Hello and welcome to part 7, which has the rather unhelpful title, perhaps, of Rare Components and Miscellanea. In other words, everything that I can think of that I haven't really mentioned so far, but might be interesting. A lot of these are to do with the less common components in the libraries. Let's get the simulator back up again and expand the menus and have a look at what's in the rare components buckets. Well, this is a transformer. Um, you can set the turns ratio of the transformer by editing the um, text file there. Note that a 2 to 4 transformer has a ratio of 1 to 2, so it will automatically change anything like 3 to 6 that you type in to 1 to 2, and it will try to reflect that in the actual windings that it shows around the core. There should be twice as many of these turnings on the bottom as there are on the top. Um, we'll, we won't have time to talk about how all these components work at this stage. I'll introduce them again as we come across them during the lectures of the module. This is a Thevenin source, an equivalent source. Um, right, it behaves exactly the same as this. Effectively, these two circuits are doing exactly the same thing. Talk a lot more about Thevenin and equivalent circuits when we get to that part of the course. This is an adder. Its job is to add a signal coming in on this terminal to a signal coming in on this terminal. This one and the voltage source here and the voltage sink here and the gain block here are really only used in the quiz app to generate circuits. You wouldn't simulate a circuit with one of these. So I won't say too much more about any of these at the moment. This is a, a galvanometer, a basic component in a analog voltmeter or ammeter. Um, if you connect one side to ground and I connect the other side to a voltage source, and maybe set the maximum value of the voltage source to 1, then you'll see that it displays just like a moving coil um, meter would, displays the voltage across it. If you try and put too much voltage across it, then the little red overflow light lights up. That's that one. Um, this is a dependent voltage source. Again, not something that you can just get out of the drawers of, a, of, a, of the lab. It's something that represents the behavior of a circuit, of a part of a circuit. This is telling me that the voltage that it produces on its output here will be some factor times the voltage measured by a voltmeter at this point there. So, for example, if I put a, um, a one volt cell across its input like this, let's turn off those currents for now, and put a voltmeter across the output like that, the voltmeter would be reading one volt. But if I change the scale factor, if I change what this um, voltage dependent voltage source does by moving this to a 2, then what this component does is it puts a voltage between its output terminals, which is twice the voltage between its input terminals. Or it could be five times the voltage between its input terminals, and so on. There's also a dependent current source, which does a similar thing only for currents. The current that it forces out of its output is a fixed factor times the voltage between its two inputs. This is a voltage-dependent current source. 
You can also have a current dependent current source. If I double click on this, we end up here. That is a current source which is dependent on the reading on an ammeter that's part of the input circuit. So whatever current is flowing in its input circuit would be multiplied by one, and that is the current that it's trying to force through its output terminals. Uh, they're useful in modeling the behavior of more complex circuits. There are, oh yes, these are components that we use in the lab. The thing about simulators is that they tend to only give you the performance of perfect ideal components. A capacitor in a simulator is a perfect capacitor. An inductor in a simulator is a perfect inductor. Well, in the real world, there is no such thing. So this allows us to use inductors or capacitors, which represent the real behavior of actual components that you can buy and they don't behave like ideal components at all. And this allows us to incorporate these less than ideal, these real world components in simulations. Look at those again, much more detail when we come across to those labs. That's a general impedance. We'll talk more about that in the summer term. It's not a resistor. You can think of that as a resistance which has a value which is a function of frequency. And you can program in exactly what that function is. We've then got some bipolar transistors, a NPN and a PNP bipolar transistor, which we don't actually cover in this module at all. So I won't say too much more about those at the moment. I will mention this. It's a rectangle. It has no function in terms of the simulation at all. It just allows you to annotate your circuit diagrams a little bit better. You can put it onto the circuit here, adjust where it is, edit the text. This is my um, source. And if you need, move it around as so. If you want to get rid of it, same as any other component, just drag it off the screen like that. You drag them by this little point here in their top right-hand corner, just for annotating the circuits. And finally, text. You can add some text anywhere. And it just does has no function in terms of the simulation at all. Again, it's just for annotating your designs so that when you save them and load them back in, you can leave little notes for yourself about what you were doing. Um, you can edit them just like any other piece of text. If you want to move them, you gr um, grab just about there on the top right-hand part, sorry, the top left-hand part, when the um, cursor changes to that sort of four arrow symbol that indicates you can move something, and if you want to delete them, just drag them off the screen, just like anything else. Right, I can't think of much else to add at this point. I think those are the main bits of the simulator that you will need to know at least to get started with. Next little talk, we'll have a look at the transient simulations, which we will be using a little bit later on in the autumn term.